Okay, welcome to a review with a bit of a difference. The difference being, I've never done anything like this before whatsoever. At all. Under any circumstances. Never have I attempted to do clothes reviews, or should I say more sort of costume reviews. And you'll find out in just a second whether I'm actually going to enjoy this or not. <laughs> So first of all, we have a cloak, and as I'm wearing this already, I can feel my voice sort of muffled in a very bizarre kind of way. Um, just have this little clasp thing here, so you can sort of fit it around like so. And it is rather a long outfit. Now, I've got my wide-angled lens, and I haven't got it at the widest setting, because unfortunately if I did, you'd be able to see all of my set, but, you know, it's a bit of a misshapen item, I think, in many regards. I mean, you can adjust it and what not as needs be, but it just sort of feels just a bit on the misshapen side. It also has this weird... What the hell is this supposed to be for? I mean, this is a medieval type Robin Hood-esque kind of thing, but seriously, why did anybody have anything like this on the real deal back in the day. Just, why? What's it for? What purpose does it have? Now, I'm just wearing this on top of normal clothing. You can see the label here, which is from Intermoden, which is at www.inter-moden.com. Uh, it all seems to be in German there. Article, Faber, Grobe, Press. There's actually washing instructions on here, which tells you it's 100% bomb wool cotton. Um, and then there's various instructions in both German and English. 30 degrees wash, it can be ironed. It's got some weird little thing that looks like a triangle with a cross in it. Then it's got what looks like a parking sign and even what looks like a gas hob as well. But by itself, I mean, yeah. Presumably this is something that, you know, could, could be worn on top of other things. And thankfully, I have other things. So, let's go give those a try. So here I am in what is basically a pirate-like shirt. I basically bought a whole load of stuff that had a bit of a general crossover in themes of sorts. So I've got some stuff that's basically kind of medieval fantasy and stuff that's uh, also sort of pirate-like stuff. And I quite like this in its own right. It is quite snazzy. You've got little threads here to tighten things up a bit, but I kind of prefer the somewhat open look. You can pop the collar, you can unpop the collar if you prefer. Okay, it's up to yourself in that regard. And I do kind of like, you know, how these hang. It does give a quite nice look when you're walking around. Now, I've also got trousers, which can't really see that well uh, at this kind of angle. I'll have to try to do something to uh, show this off a bit. But it's the same sort of theme. I'll take some b-roll footage or something later on at some point. And just as a closer look at the trousers, it also features pockets on either side. Okay, quite deep ones as well. And, as I couldn't really show them before, it has the similar, it has a very similar kind of tie-up system at the bottom, just so you can do whatever you might want to do as far as tightening up is concerned. The only problem with the trousers is that they're not particularly secure in their own right. They do have a, a little thread around the top to allow you to tighten things up and sort of tie them together like that, and they've got button-down bits. Um, but, unfortunately, they don't seem to work too well. A bit of uh, free movement and they're gone. Now, how does this work with this cape? The answer to that is actually works quite well in its own right. At the moment, I've actually managed to put the hood in the back, so it actually gives you, you know, a bit of v variation in what you can do, and I think it looks quite nice. As it's th a different colour green, it does, well, it's a slightly different colour green, so it does t tend to merge a bit. It's like you're p going around playing Robin Hood at the moment. Uh, yeah, but I do kind of like it, especially if we free the hood. So if you free the hood up like this and have it on, then it, yeah, it's a little bit on the samey side in that kind of regard. But putting it down doesn't really make much difference, it just sort of adds a bit more dramaticness to it all. 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll take this off. I've got another shirt to show you as well, so you'll you'll probably like this. Okay, so here I am in the black version of the pirate shirt, and this has kind of got the Dread Pirate Robbins or Robertson or whatever the hell the character's name was from the Princess Bride kind of feel to it. The collar's a bit bigger. Um, you've got the same sort of threads in place, but uh, matter of a loss as to where everything else actually is there. That's a bit bizarre. Um, it's, I guess it's more designed to sort of stay out like that, so it helps if you've got a hairy chest like I do to actually wear this well. And they've got similar sort of attachments to what you had on the green outfit uh, in that regard. Now, this is a bit frillier, as you can see. It's a bit more fluffy in the arms. I suppose that's to try to make them look bigger and more intimidating and whatnot. And does still seem to be quite nice and large in the chest as well to sort of project largeness, masculinity and so on and so forth in that kind of regard. Um, it does, however, feel very different to the green shirt. They're both supposed to be made out of the same kind of cotton as the cloak, uh, so it's just a little on the, hmm, it's just a little on the unusual side that it feels more like it's got a sort of slightly canvasy type feel to it. If you look at the cloak, then you can see straight off that the cloak's material is a sort of more rough to, uh, to it. It's got a sort of roughness to it that this just doesn't. It's got a very smooth feel to it. But it's the same kind of material, still cotton specifically. So, does this work with this? Now the thing is, this sort of hides whatever you're wearing underneath, so, hmm. Let's just see. And the problem with the hood is it's so big and floppy and whatnot, it can quite easily go over and cover your entire face, but I quite like what we've got here. It works quite well to my mind. Okay, the, okay so it's not really supposed to go with th this particular outfit, but somehow it just works. When I've seen myself in the mirror with this, it does seem to work quite nicely, but let's just take this off and put it to one side, because there are other things I have as well. I have this belt, which I still haven't entirely figured out how to put on, but, hmm. It must be possible. <laughs> Somehow. Well, I'm not going to, to claim to have done it correctly, but this is what I've managed to do so far, so I'm a bit flustered as to how it's supposed to actually work, because, uh, yeah, see how that's just fallen apart when I've tried to adjust it. I shall have to look this up properly to see how it's supposed to be done because I'm not convinced for a second that this is how you do it. However, I do have a couple of other things I can show off now. I can show you off these trousers, okay? Notice that it has these sections here which, you know, these little ties that just don't seem to really do what they're supposed to do. I had tightened it up around here before, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to have actually worked. Let's try it a bit tighter this time. Hopefully that will work. All right, now I've got one other thing to show you before we move on to other things. Pirate boots. All right. Now I quite like the look of these. They've got quite a nice look and feel to them. I'm even trying to get used to the way the belt looks as well, although I'm still convinced it's wrong. The easiest way to get in and out of these is to basically unzip on, on the inside. And once they're all zipped up, they are quite neat. They've got quite a little bit of a heel on the bottom here, and some quite nice decorative areas here. It can be a bit hard to balance in these things, as I'm finding out, as I wear them for the first time. All in all, I'm quite liking the look of them. The buckles you can see here are decorative, but you can alter them. You can unfasten them to make them tighter if you want. They've not got much in the way of, uh, you know, spaces to actually put anything in, but, you know, they look the part. They look like what pirates wear in the movies. There's also some instructions here. All man-made materials, Caribbean 299, and then a reference number. And there is actually some labels in the bottom, so let's just take a look at that. Step into fun with Phantasma. That's the name of this particular brand make. So, given that I've never worn anything like these before, I'm quite enjoying them. 
Now there's a couple of other things I've got as well to show off. Right, now it took a little while and it did involve having to adjust the belt a bit, but I think you'll like this. I just have to adjust the camera again. Because what I've done is I've put on several little uh, utility belt type things here. Got at least two different pouches, which could be useful for pretty much anything. We have this little pouch of vials. These are little plastic containers that you can put pretty much anything you want in, or just leave it alone as is. You can have a little supply of rum, you can have a little supply of water in case it gets really hot at a convention. You've got this lovely little bit here, which you could perhaps potentially have a mini sack in. This one on the other hand looks like it can have pretty much anything in, you know, from a mobile phone to a really substantial size wallet. Uh, and over here we have a sword and a, you know, and just one of these little off-cut scabbards. And I've reviewed this before. It, you know, just take my own arm off. Thankfully, it's not a real sword. It's just a plastic little toy one. But I think it does complete the ensemble quite nicely. In fact, I can think of just one thing to add to the experience just a little bit more. A gauntlet. Now the only problem I have with this particular gauntlet is it only came as a set of one. I thought it was supposed to be a pair of two, but it only came as one. But it does, you know, look at the part a bit more. And it does, you know, look like somebody who's going to be dueling one-handed might. You know, but you've got more freedom of movement with the on gauntleted hand because trying to do the same sort of tricks with the gauntleted hand turns out to be a little difficult. It does restrict your movement just a little bit. You do have some areas here that you can adjust ever so slightly. Well, you can't really, it's just there for show. But the stitching and everything is nice. The actual quality of the leather feels good. It does feel like it could protect your hand and arm quite well from something like this. But wait, there's more, because it also comes in black. Identical in every regard, apart from the colour. Now these come from Epic Armoury. And again, it's the same sort of thing, but black, so it all sort of adds an air of sinisterness to whatever you might be trying to do. When all's said and done, I'm quite liking it. There's only two drawbacks that I want to point out, so I'm going to adjust the camera again. Okay, first of all is the cost of all of these. The clothes alone cost uh, around 40 to 50 pounds. That's each individual item, whether it was the top that I'm wearing now, the trousers, the cloak, it was all 40 to 50 pounds. Other items were quite expensive in their own right as well, so it does add up, so it is best to shop around and look for the best possible deal. I got all of these off Amazon, there'll be a link below, but of course, please, for the love of God, look around for the uh, places as well, before you just go with the most expensive thing going. That said, it is excellent good quality. This is not going to get broken or torn or damaged easily. However, there is one other thing I must point out. Um, there is nothing to indicate how fire resistant they might be. The reason I bring this up, if those of you who are outside of the UK have not heard of her, there is a BBC presenter called Claudia Winkleman. Uh, she is the highest paid female BBC presenter at this point in time, as revealed when the BBC had to uh, reveal everybody's salaries. Not that that's relevant, but she has hosted a campaign regarding costumes after one of her children was set alight when wearing a fairy costume to a Halloween party. Her costume itself uh, brushed against some candles and literally went up in flames. I've no idea just how much damage has been done to uh, the girl in, in question. I, I can't even tell you her name, but I do know that Claudia has actually been hosting, uh, hosting a whole load of action to try to make sure that costumes like that are governed by the same rules that clothing is. Now, clothing in the UK, and I'm assuming by extension the EU in general at this point, yay Brexit, there's my foot. Uh, in general, clothing has to follow very strict rules and regulations where it has to have 
very little in the way of flammable materials in it and has to have some sort of fire protection in it. Costumes, on the other hand, aren't governed by that, so I have no idea whether or not I'm currently standing in some sort of fire trap. Potentially I am, I just don't know for certain at this point. Um, so that is something worth considering as well. It may simply be a much better choice to get a hold of items that look very similar to what you're looking for that are just regular clothes and just adjusting them if you if you have the know-how. But as for what I'm wearing right now, what I've worn so far, yeah, I can recommend it. It is good quality stuff. I just don't know if the price is worth it. I don't know about fire resistant issues as well. Well, that said, time to end this because this has been going on for quite a while. Thanks for watching if you still are. Bye bye. Oh yeah, one little addendum I'll put onto this as well. It gets bloody warm in these things as well. I really should have got rid of this earlier, shouldn't I? That's just... Aha, I'm free of you.